All right. So, uh, Ben Stretch, uh, expert in the world of uh, broadcast and cable, is this a good move? Do you think, from a business perspective, you heard Oprah talk about it, how it feels right. Um, what about this whole notion of moving away from broadcast and syndication to just having her own cable network? Look, cable networks are the flavor of the month, right? And there is no better illustration of that than what Comcast is trying to do at the moment with NBC Universal. The reason why Comcast wants its an interest in NBC Universal primarily, in my view, is the cable networks. Um, the cable and just, I just should say, and coincidentally, I'm just very lucky that I have your recent report on the Comcast NBC Universal potential takeover. All right, go ahead. I yeah. beg your pardon. That, that's yeah. all right. No, no the uh, so we wrote this note. The note that you're talking about, we wrote about sort of mice and peacocks. So mice being the Disney attempt that Comcast made, uh, the, the attempt of, of Comcast in 2005 to take um, Walt Disney over, um, which failed. And a lot of that was premised on the fact that Disney had these fantastic cable network properties. So tons of great content. Um, now it's NBC Universal that's the opportunity there is to, 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 to take an interest. The Vendi wants to sell, they own 20%. GE want, it wants to, to really to sell down, they need the cash. So here's the opportunity to, to, take, to get some cable networks under the, under the umbrella. Um, it does two things, it does two things. I think, I think Roberts really wants to, to, is driving at a couple of different things here. One is he's trying to keep his programming costs under control. Programming costs for this company are growing at eight to nine percent every year, right? And that's against a top line, um, so a revenue line that's really not growing that fast at all. So he's trying to control his programming costs. But actually, there's a bigger there's a bigger thing at play here, and that is um, Comcast owns programming cable networks of its own that generate about five hundred and fifty million dollars of EBITDA every year. He gets no credit in his trading valuation That's right. for that today. He, the Comcast stock trades at 5.2 times EBITDA, which is a roughly about the same as his peers, Time Warner Cable. Right. He so gets like, viewed as a cable company, not as a content company. He provider. gets viewed as a distributor, not as a content company. So by constructing this joint venture and taking a 51% interest, vending his existing cable networks into that, putting NBC Universal into that, he gets himself into a great position because a he deals with a problem that the investors have with him today, which is you don't own any content. Right. You own, oh, your own, so okay. Own so own he bites. deals with the cost of content increasing. And, he deals and, with and that the, and the fact that the, uh, the this over the top video concern of so um, content being delivered over the internet and not over his over his um, his set top box video platform. So he's dealing with problem number one, but he deals with problem number two as well, which is in two or three years time. If the market still doesn't give him credit for his programming assets, he's got, a, he's got a really simple solution. He'll go to GE and he'll say, OK, I'll take the other 49% of NBC Universal that I don't own and I'll, I'll consolidate that all up and I'll float that IP, I'll IPO, that content group, into the market. The market will pay 10 or 11 times EBITDA, which is what they pay for cable networks. And I will force the market, I will show the market that cable networks are an extraordinarily value, valuable property, and I'll force the market to give me credit for it. All right, but having said all that, I mean, does that do enough to assuage the investors that have been waiting, waiting patiently for Comcast now that they are generating cash, now that they have built out the cable network? They've been waiting for the cash flow to actually flow to the shareholders because, as you said, you know, you started this by talking, I like your, your title here, Mice and, and Peacocks. The mice referring to Disney, the attempt to acquire Disney, now Peacocks acquiring NBC Universal. Are they ever going to see any money? Yeah, and it's the mice and peacocks pilfering the cheese, right? right? And the cheese is this free cash flow. Investors, big and small, have held cable companies on this premise of we are going to get this, this free cash flow cheese is is close. We can we can we can smell it, and whether that's by share buybacks or dividends um, or other sorts of capital management policy, we'll get access to that free cash flow. And here again, we're not seeing it. And investors, the reason why Comcast stock is under pressure and why I believe it will stay under pressure for the foreseeable future is that that free cash flow is just not going to come back to us as shareholders. The, the, the intent of this company is to grow. Roberts is running this company on a 10-year view. But, all right, but is, there, is there a possibility that there's, there's a flaw in, in all of this because, you know, distribution is one thing. Yep. You can distribute what's popular based on whatever works. Sure. If you own the content and it turns out that that's not working, now you're stuck with having to fix not working content and that's a much different problem. Absolutely. So this, so this is the other, the other problem that this, this transaction will potentially introduce, which is 
Comcast and NBC put together. So it's an MSO, a, a cable company, a distributor, and a content company. So you've got to get both arms working together and working, you know, um, working appropriately and, and firing on both cylinders. Now that's a, that's a really tough gig. It's a gig that Time Warner tried when it owned Time Warner, the content company, and Time Warner Cable, the And they the, said, the no, we're not going to do that, we split them off. And in first quarter this year, they said, you know what, we, we actually, we're actually we not going to be distributors anymore. We, we're, we're, we're divesting the, the MSO. And in fact, they've gone further and they said, you know what, AOL, same thing. We don't want to be distributors, we're divesting that too. And so this transaction, if it goes ahead, is the complete antithesis of what happened in the first quarter. It is fascinating that two enormous conglomerates have taken in the space of six months completely divergent views on the way that this industry is evolving. Well that means that you're going to have to come back very soon to bring us up to date on what's going on with these two different views. The battle, not maybe not the battle, but the, uh, the different views of cable as well as network broadcasters. Ben Stretch coming in from Macquarie. Appreciated expertise. Always. Pleasure. Very good. Thanks, Thanks for the insight.